Hello and welcome back to the Canadian Virtual HR Conference. My name is Mark Belaish. I'm president of torontojobs.ca. I'll just give it just a couple of minutes here to let everybody get back into the uh, area. We've had a lot of great topics this afternoon, uh, a lot of great networking as well. I've been able to meet a few people in the networking area and the expo as well. We do actually tack on about 10 more minutes at the end of this so that you can go into the networking area still if you wanna do some networking. And we also have the expo area as well that you can uh, spend some time on. By all means, uh, throw in a question. I'm gonna introduce the panelists in a second here, just giving people an opportunity to move from the last session to this session. But feel free to uh, ask any questions of the panelists in the event or in the stage area. And I'm happy to moderate. There's also a Q&A section in the event uh, area. So I'll be on the lookout for any questions that you might have. So. Without further ado, as I see people coming onto the platform here, which is great, I will introduce our panel today. Leanne Joffrey is Human Resources Director of Canada as Striker. Welcome, Leanne. Thank you, Mark. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. It's been a little while. So why don't you tell uh, people a little bit about yourself, what, what Striker does, and perhaps a little bit about your background as well? Sure, so thank you for the opportunity to connect. Uh, my name is Leanne Joffrey. I'm currently the leading HR for Stryker Canada. Stryker is a med tech uh, company. We, um, a lot of hips, knees uh, in terms of replacement. We do a number of beds in terms of the ambulances. We have a huge sustainability, so we're across multiple businesses. We're a global organization spanning across Latin America, um, uh, Europe, Asia Pacific, so very, very big company in Canada. So I've been in HR for about 16 years in a whole bunch of different roles from talent acquisition to employee experience to talent management to overseeing HR. Um, and they brought me on in terms of strikers to kind of build um, the function out in a little bit of a different way than it was. So it's been a really exciting time at Striker Canada, so. Excellent, well, thanks very much for, uh, for being here. And uh, Travis Wilson is Senior Manager of Human Resources at Faskin. Thanks, Travis. And uh, perhaps the same, a little bit about yourself, what you do, and uh, a little bit about Faskin for those that don't know who Faskin is. You bet. Thanks, Mark. I really appreciate the chance to be here. And thanks to Leanne and, and Mehdi for, for joining. It's great to be a part of such a good panel on this. Uh, Faskin's a, a global law firm specializing in corporate law space. So we would have partners across uh, globally. We have offices in South Africa, across Canada, and London, and Johannesburg. Um, and we really do focus in on the corporate legal space. So many of the larger corporations in Canada would, would work with us or some of our partner firms across the country. For me personally, uh, I was fortunate to start my career in oil and gas pre-recession, so got to be a part of uh, some real learning there in, in the compensation space and what felt like the Wild West in Calgary. And uh, since then have, have been able to make my career in really HR business partner, HR generalist work. Uh, touching on the financial services industry, pension industry, and now legal. Excellent. Well, we'll come back to the legal side uh, as we go along here as well. And uh, Mehdi Rahman, always a pleasure, always fun to hang out. Uh, head of yeah, talent, always. performance, inclusion, and culture at RSA Canada. Mehdi, welcome yeah. once again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me and really good to hang out and excited about hanging out with Travis and Leanne. Um, so my name is Mehdi Rahman. I go by he or him. Uh, you know, I've been in HR for over 20 years uh, in uh, working for some of the most iconic brands, um, you know, uh, Best Buy, um, uh, McDonald's, Publicis Media, which is a large media agency, and then also Luxottica. And most recently, I uh, just joined RSA uh, as we just uh, got acquired by Intact, uh, which is a part of the insurance and financial services uh, industry. Um, and here I've been doubling down on uh, the correlation between culture and performance and inclusion uh, and seeing how that all works together. And so uh, really proud of uh, my role here and, and what I've been able to do here. Excellent. Well, thanks, Betty, and uh, we'll definitely uh, touch on inclusion as we go along here as well. So, uh, Leanne, maybe you can start with just uh, your, uh, it's a global company. Um, Striker is very well known. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, look it up because you probably know their products for sure. Um, but what, what, what are the issues that you face with a global company from an HR perspective? Um, what are the challenges that you have and, and what, how do you deal with them? Yeah, so we're a highly matrixed environment. So um, our reporting structures are complex. Um, 
so we always joke we are the matrix so we have reporting structures in Europe we have reporting structures in the US so it's really where does Canada fit in the line I would say for us what the benefit of that is we are really really focused on two kind of key areas or three really one is um, we're a very big focus in terms of diversity and inclusion so Stryker has been on this journey for a number of years, um, but really starting to articulate how we actually build that into our talent strategy. So we, this week we kicked off with our first global diversity and inclusion conference across the globe. So we're doing every single day a focus around those pieces. Um, and really it's how do we embed it in every piece of our culture and how do we, you know, in terms of change of behavior. So I'd say that's a very big focus. And being part of an organization that, that has that global reach has been really, really helpful. The second piece, which I'm sure a number of um, my colleagues are also uh, really thinking about is returning to the office and what does that look like in the new world? So we know virtual works because we've all been virtual for a year and a half. We know in office works, but now we're moving to a new frontier in terms of how do we bring people back safely and appropriately. So we, um, so there's been a lot of discussions in terms of project Homeward Bound, in terms of bringing people back and what does that look like, um, and a lot of tools and resources around what is what could that look like, because there's not going to be a one size fits approach. Yeah. And I would say the final piece is around how do we create systems that support the infrastructure and all of these programs. Uh, change is accelerating, systems are accelerating. Um, the market is exploding in terms of people of choice. So how do we leverage tools, resources, and culture so that we are and continue to be an employer of choice? We've been very fortunate. We've won great place to work and for a number of years and have won numerous awards. But when you're on the top of the game, how do you keep being on top and not get comfortable? So I would say that's really where our key really areas of focus that we're looking at. Excellent. Great, uh, great summary. Lots of uh, lots of uh, stuff that we're going to come back to for sure. Uh, Travis, uh, Leanne mentioned about uh, coming back to the office and so on. Uh, any uh, updates as to on your end? Some uh, something that you can share, you're comfortable sharing, and, and uh, policies and so on. Yeah, I think I would echo a bit of what Leanne said. I really like that project Homeward Bound. We may steal that one, Leanne. I think that that, that concept. I mean, the the hybrid I model. Had my is, ball, Travis. You got it. You can mark. <laughs> Trademark. You got it. TM. Um, it's. Uh, I would say you know we're we're very much there as, as Leanne mentioned. We're looking at that model and and the reality that it's worked and and what does that hybrid model look for us going forward. And so for us. Uh, certainly the acceptance that we are going to go hybrid. And I think for us too, um, hard to, to, we're working through that piece where we know we're not going to dictate to groups on, on how that's going to go for them. We're going to have roles that are going to need to be in the office as a professional services firm, as a law firm. Certain things can only be done in the office right now. And so, um, you know, that's been maybe one of the other uh, blessings as part of the, the pandemic and shining a light on some of that. And does that make sense for us going forward? Can we innovate? Can we automate? Can we continue to, to evolve and change? But, but we're very much going to be in a hybrid model, but we're also going to try and, and continue to think about uh, our position as a firm of choice, an employer of choice, and, and what works for our people and our clients and, and trying to bridge that. So I know, Mark, I kind of talked a lot, but didn't say much. We, we're definitely going hybrid. Uh, and, and we're working through kind of what that model is going to look like. Hmm. So hybrid, generally speaking, I know you're still working through it, but <laughs> two days, three day, two days at home, three days at home. Uh, you know, I, I think, and, and this is probably premature for me to say, but but if, um, you know, I don't think we're going to be quite as prescriptive. Certain roles will have that. It's where we'll need them to be in. You think about a model in a law firm where there's uh, some administrative staff and some professional roles are supporting our partners, our lawyers on deals, on events. So that that will have to take place in the office uh, or may need to take place as required. And then other roles where it's going to be kind of job specific, event specific. Um, what When do you need to be in and, and governing accordingly? All right, makes sense. Uh, and Mehdi, how about you? What, what are you guys doing? You know, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll kind of just, I'll, I'll be a little controversial on this one, just, you know, or not controversial, I'll just add one la last context. I think everyone's thinking about it the right way, being methodical, looking at essential services, asking a lot of good questions. Um, but I think the thing that we need to think about is, um, you know, where families are, are going back to school, 
uh, and how that what looks for them. And, you know, I would just challenge all of us as HR professionals to, you know, just, you know, look at our, our complete uh, picture of our demographics of who employ, who we employ. You know, we're seeing a lot around women, uh, minority women specifically that are having challenges uh, in this current environment. And so, you know, um, instead of rushing to come back to the office and project home homeward or uh, you know homebound um i would just you know ask just like let's let's look at our demographics and see what makes sense and can we hold off you know maybe another month um so that parents and families can really get acclim acclimatized to that new norm that's going to come back in the in the fall so um you know but but I, again i think everyone's doing the same being very patient methodical uh and then looking uh at what ne actually needs to get done and uh and i like our canadian approach of being a little bit on the conservative side in some areas uh and so you know let, let's see what what happens uh and taking our marks from uh, from other you know parts of the world and may i guess i'll just jump in you called it out beautifully and i apologize you timing is so important and i think uh, critical for us, uh, I'll say, and, and um, but we're not rushing back on that hybrid model. We've yeah. acknowledged yeah. the hybrid model, yeah. but I think your, your sentiment was beautiful. We've got to figure out what the fall looks like for everybody too, right? And 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 the potential looming, what, what may loom uh, with Delta waves, other waves, yeah. who, who could say? So, you know, yeah. I, I have heard, and, and it doesn't sound like it's anybody on this panel where some organizations are saying, hey, September 1 or September yeah, 2nd, we'll not. see you there. Uh, it doesn't sound like that's any of us, and and, no. and nor would we want to be. Yeah. And, and you know, I'll I'll say like I've heard of cases where some organizations are still saying this year's a write-off. Like in terms of you're not coming back to the office this year. Focus on your families. Focus on your 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 own community. And then you know, like we'll we'll start with a clean slate, likely in in January. But again, more more details to come. Um, and so, um, but you know, and they're giving options to people and functions and departments. Um, you know, to come back in the fall or parts of the fall if, the, if they yeah. need so. We've pulsed. We've actually surveyed our employee base um, to understand, you know, what they need. And, and for us, as our managers are having individual discussions with each employee to understand kind of what their needs are. So we are not saying, you know, we have a date that we want to see kind of phase one. But again, it's a moving target and that's around mm -hmm. infrastructure. It has nothing to do with, everybody has to be in the office. It's around, here's the infrastructure we need. Should we go back? Good for you. And one of the things, not to keep this going, Mark, but one yeah. of the things we don't talk a lot about and one of the, the ahas for, for me in particular, you know, there are people who desperately want to be back in the office. And of mm -hmm. course, we, we yeah. can talk through the variety of reasons, reasons why. You know, we've been fortunate that outside of the lockdown period, our offices were open. We, we, we had a fairly strict process, especially when COVID was, was more rampant in terms of who was going in, why they were going in, because we had some roles that needed to be in. So we needed to make sure that they were protected too. But I think, you know, that, that group or, or subset of employees that desperately wants to be back in the office is one that we're hearing a bit more of too. And I think there's probably some nuance as far as lifestyle and, and, and certainly mental health plays a role in that. And there's also, you know, some of what we talked about early in the pandemic and maybe isn't being talked about as much at home, but challenges at home too. And so the opportunity for people to be out of the house and, and to get uh, in, in some cases a break or get the help that they need. So I think that dynamic, and, and it sounds like both of you were talking about it too, of easing back in and, you know, that hard stop, hard start is, is likely never going to work for anybody. And so that will be, that's something I'm kind of uh, looking forward to seeing that as we, we roll that in. And we have a, an idea of who's going to be rushing back in, but we'll, we're expecting some surprises too. Uh, I remember, uh, you know, Google and Facebook coming out fairly quickly uh, when the pandemic hit and said, you know, we're not going to let, we're not going to have people come back until January, 2021. Remember? And, uh, <laughs> and it was, it was like so far off at that point that I was like, oh yeah, it'll be all over and done with. And then, uh, you know, Shopify was one of the first major companies that said, look, we're not expecting anybody back at all. So just stay home completely. And now we sit here in, you know, July of, of uh, 2021 and, nobody knows right it's like we could be sitting here in six months from now saying well maybe there's at some point of a future where we're uh where we will come back or maybe there's a hybrid or whatever so it's, it's really left up in the air and i think as yeah. hr people you, you're on the kind of what do we do <laughs> do we you know you don't want to pull people in too quickly and you don't want to uh, it's, it's, it's a balance between like that productivity and then protection right like you know our jobs at risk and, and protect organizations, but at the same time, for-profit organizations drive performance and results. So it is a balancing act for sure.
That's right. Maddie, I, I've lost your camera again. So maybe if you want to leave and then come back in again, like, like we did uh, earlier. Uh, so Leanne, uh, wanted to ask you, um, for, uh, actually, first of all, uh, I just want to mention who the panel is. My name is Mark Belage. I'm president of torontojobs.ca. Uh, Travis Wilson is senior manager of human resources at Faskin. And Leanne Joffrey is human resources director, Canada at Stryker. And Mehdi uh, Rahman is head of talent performance, inclusion, and culture at RSA Canada. So feel free if you have any questions, comments, uh, throw them in the event area, the, the event chat, or in the stage chat. I'm happy to moderate if you have any questions as well. So, Leanne, let's talk about diversity and, and inclusion. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been uh, obviously a, a, a huge issue uh, with everything that's happened, George Floyd and, and, and all the things that happened over the last year during COVID, of course. Uh, obviously, it's been an issue for many, many years. So what's happening now? Like, what would you say to other HR people in terms of um, what you're seeing, what you're feeling, what you're sensing? Yeah, so for us, as is really an employee, we we, we essentially are a um, executive sponsor, IERG, which are employee resource groups. So we have a variety of different ones that are globally and locally founded. So we have, you know, some for women, some for uh, black, LBG, LG, um, uh, a variety of other ones. We have, I would say there are about nine or 10 ERGs across our businesses. And those are individuals who join as a team and make recommendations in terms of what, um, what it should look like from a diversity and inclusion perspective. So, so an example is during Pride Month, we had people who shared their stories and had questions. We've done safe training around how to create safe places to provide. We do unconscious bias training that's held globally. So for us, it's more education and understanding bias within ourselves and having people who are who are choosing to be involved and share their stories. So we're starting. That's kind of the approach that we're we're taking right now in terms of and then also understanding our employee population base a little bit. So as you know, in Canada, we can't track math, you know, nor sh the question is, should you track it? Should you not track it? But for us, it's around changing kind of a mindset and around bias and around perception. So for us, it's a journey um, around those pieces. And I think for us looking at where are we recruiting, you know, in terms of are we at where we should be at for positions, at what level, all of those pieces we're starting to kind of really hone in around how do we support, um, not just saying it, but actually believing it and implementing it and, and how do we, you know, our performance management programs, all of those, how do we, how do we ensure that it's inclusive in terms of those perspectives? Does that make sense, Mark? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's great. Thanks, Leanne. And, and Mehdi, as uh, uh, head of talent performance, inclusion and culture at RSA Canada, do you want to add, uh, what do you want yeah, to add? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot to add. There's a lot. <laughs> sure. but, uh, you know, I, I, I first I got to call, like say that I'm, I'm proud that like, you know, all organizations and all peoples are, are, are looking at this right now, you know, where we were a year ago or ago to where we are today you know Leanne's point about it's a journey and everyone's on this journey I'm, I'm really really proud of that I'm proud of HR professionals for taking it you know uh, looking at themselves first and then going through training you know you're going through places you know hearing about CCI and other uh, great organizations that are like uh, the, the number of attendees and classes and courses are, are through the roof you know I th the one Add, I'll have to lean in and, and everybody on this, uh, you know, that's attending today, you know, dissecting this and looking at your organization and yourself um, into four kind of categories, you know, and, and Leanne talked a lot about like individual, like interper uh, as, an, as an individual, what do I need to know about myself? biases i think the second one is around interpersonal how you work with others and how you perceive others um and then the effort that it takes for, to, to engage people in, in these positive dialogues um i think then there's like systemic like what are we doing not only as a uh, as an organization but uh, across you know other organizations and maybe market um and then and then specifically um uh institutions so institution interpersonal uh individual and systemic and each organization plays a role in each one of those each hr department can play a different role and help people move the as you continue as we all continue to reflect and look at what we're doing um those are the four pillars i would look at and see what are we doing in these four pillars uh as hr professionals or as leaders to help move the dial on that 
there's one other thing I would add uh, before Travis. I know he has a lot of good stuff to add to this, but um, you know, I know you said you know diversity and inclusion. There's two words I would love to add for our just our common language, uh, especially as Canadians. I think we should be leading this uh, equity. Right, so equity, diversity, inclusion, and then the other one is the word towards justice, um, and making sure that you know everybody feels um, uh, is treated the way that they should be treated, uh, and having access to resources uh, that everyone else has as well. So justice, equity, you know, diversity, inclusion are, are four words that I would like to, uh, Canadians to migrate towards. Um, so yeah, but Travis, I know, well, has a lot of good thoughts on this. Oh, no, and I and I certainly don't want to. I think both of you have said fantastic things, and, and really appreciate. It. I was just gonna, you know, add, and and you'll, maybe you'll be happy with this. We hired the firm hired our chief equity, diversity, and inclusion officer, Sandeep Tatla, in January, and I think for us that was a conscious move, conscious decision. We have uh, ERG similar to Striker. We have uh, an equity, diversity, and inclusion council that has existed amongst our partnership. But the move to bring in a chief EDI officer was was critical for us. You think about. Um, for us, our business supporting our clients, you know, dealing with the the level of corporations that we do, this EDI, what we do from an EDI perspective, how we represent relative to the diversity of our employees, our partners, our board, um, is critical as as people come to us to consider using us as as a law firm. And so there is a business imperative for us to be um, uh, continuing to move this forward. But there's also a critical piece for us at, at Baskin. One of our values is community and that we, we make the communities that we're in better. And of course, you can only do that by being representative of the communities that you're in. And so the thing that that's come to light, uh, for all of us is, is the impact on the, our indigenous community in Canada. And so, you know, I'm, I'm very proud of the fact that Baskin is looking at our reconciliation response plan. Uh, what Faskin's position is and how we respond to the work that's come forward from uh, that effort and, and what was put forward. And, and I think that that continues to be uh, a major focus for us in addition to our, our diversity and inclusion goals and our equity goals. Um, the other thing I'd say that, that's been fantastic for us in this space is the opportunity to partner with other organizations. And so it's been uh, through some of our, certainly through Sandeep, through some of our partners prior to Sandeep's arrival, we have great connections with uh, Derek Raphael who started the ICON uh, group. We've, we've been engaged in the Black Technology Professionals Network. Um, in addition to other things, how we how we engage people in the legal services industry, the laws program, trying to help and identify individuals to to work through some of those systemic challenges, as you both mentioned, to getting into into law, into legal services, um, critically important for us, and will continue to be going forward. Oh, Mark, I think you're muted. Oh, Mark, you you're muted. You're now. muted. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the world of the pandemic, you're on mute. <laughs> uh, well, thanks. Great, great, uh, great conversation. I we only have a few minutes left, and I want to touch on one more area uh, of topic between the three of us, and that is uh, just kind of technology and infrastructure and systems, and and maybe you know what, what changes you've done. I mean, uh, other than you know using Zoom and things like that, but just you know, are there other uh, ch significant changes that you've had, how have you ha handled them and uh, challenges and anything that you can share to people that, who are watching. So Leanne, maybe you want to start? Yeah, so for Go sure. Ahead. So uh, Striker was, uh, and my hat's off to the L&D team, they were, they basically created how to survive virtually. So they were training tools that basically, how do you, um, how do you work online? How do you, basically how do you use teams, how do you use all the facilitation skills. Um, like all organizations, we had to pivot very quickly in terms of doing orientation virtually. So um, rethinking our orientation process. I think for us, it's it's more around creating space. So once everybody, you know, everyone now knows how to use teams, they know how to use all of this, you know, we're 18 months into this, it's more around time management and focusing on looking after yourself like everyone else um it's a big focus on burnout we just did our engagement we just got our results we did very very well but we're very conscious that people are burned out because of the use of technology 
you know, people would leave because they have to leave to go home when they were back and forwards. There's no kind of balance. So for us, holistically, we're really focusing on turning off and focusing time and using your those pieces to do kind of those pieces. So, you know, we, we're fortunate we have the tools and resources to kind of help people to communicate. It's more around how do we look after our employees and kind of pivoting. That's our next stage around those pieces. Excellent. And Mehdi, how about you? Anything that you yeah. want to add? Just, yeah, to I mean, I, I, the technology piece, I mean, this is where I love this. Like, how do you digitize the uh, employee experience now that we're, like, we're going down the trend of being more virtual? How do you breed trust? Um, you know, I'm really proud of um, our internal comms, so I'm seeing a lot of trends around um, internal communications teams. So internal communications teams are working for HR, um, which is adding to the employee experience. I'm really proud of that. I'm really continuous listening. So looking at pulse surveys and cadences around the year um, after events and, and, uh, and current events and things like that to understand how people are reacting and how our communications and our, our leadership team need to, you know, react to that. So really proud about that. And, you know, the, the you know, the flexibility. Uh, and then I also like, excited around and I mean we've been working on this is I'm um, using um, you know um, uh, changing and evolving our performance enablement culture so going from performance management to performance en enablement yes you might have three cadences of like goal setting mid-year how do you simplify that how do you get less onerous less paper-based less uh, scary for employees but allow them to think for, you know forward and say okay well, what did I do in the past that I'm really proud of that I want to celebrate with my manager if I'm going to sit down with them halfway through the year and then you know if going forward if there's one thing I could do differently to help the organization what would that be so simplifying uh, questions and how we engage our employees and what kind of check that they need to do um, you know I'm really really proud of that so organizations that are spending time about what's the digital employee experience and how do we simplify that using systems uh, I think they're on the right track and they're gonna do well excellent and Travis uh, anything to wrap things up with no you know I don't think I have a whole lot to add I, I think you know certainly we're on that journey as well we've been fortunate uh we've rolled out a new uh, hris system over pre-pandemic we're rolling out in modules so that's been you know a great thing for us as we look to automate more and innovate more with respect to our onboarding and, and recruitment um and, and that's been great for us i think the opportunity continues to present itself going forward with some of those as, as both leanne and Mehdi said the check-ins the pulse surveys uh and, and we're we're excited about that um for us that that balance of of the intrusiveness of the technology and trying to give people space i'll just quick share a quick story and perhaps it's happened to all of you i was talking to, to somebody the other day this was a while ago and was so used to just doing you know a calendar virtual meeting virtual meeting and the person said could we just talk on the phone and it just blew my mind it was like uh, yeah, i guess we could do that and so that to me was a real uh, you know i had to take pause and go yeah that that would have been how we would have done this, you know, six months ago. I could probably bring that back. So I think that that to me, just personally, is something I I continue to wrestle with and think about as we go hybrid. Like, at, at what point do we balance off this constant need to have FaceTime, which I value greatly, um, but but how much of that is intrusive to the person on the other side? So something that that we continue to noodle over on on our end on the HR team, thinking about how do we set people up for for success and then protect them to a degree uh, from a mental health perspective. Well, great, uh, great conversation. Uh, unfortunately, we're out of time, but uh, lots of great uh, points. Hopefully, uh, those watching were able to take away at least one or two points, takeaways, uh, what, seeing, hearing what other companies are doing or organizations, what issues are they're facing, and uh, hearing that, you know, it's the same for a lot of organizations right now. So thanks, everyone, to coming for uh, to the Canadian Virtual HR Conference. Today's event is presented by torontojobs.ca, sponsored by Jobstart and powered by Event logic with a K.ca. My name, Mark Belage, president of TorontoJobs.ca. I want to thank the panelists, Leanne Joffrey, Human Resources Director Canada at Stryker, Travis Wilson, Senior Manager, Human Resources at Faskin, and Mehdi Raman, Head of Talent, Performance, Inclusion, and Culture at RSA Canada. If you are looking for staff, TorontoJobs.ca can help out. Uh, there, you can post jobs on the job board. You can search the resume database. Email sales at TorontoJobs.ca for more information. And you can also check out the recruiting uh, services as well available. Job start pre-screens employees to ensure the best possible fit with the employer's requirements. 
and they assist their clients prepare for and find employment uh, for uh, for their uh, clients. So I uh, want to thank them also for participating today. I want to also let you know about uh, my uh, book called Tales from the Recruiter. You can visit it, uh, information at talesfromtherecruiter.ca if you're interested. Thanks, Wendy, for uh, coming back. And also eventlogic.ca if there's an event that you'd uh, like to have done or you'd like to participate in one of the many virtual upcoming career fairs and job fairs that are available, uh, make sure to reach out eventlogic.ca with a K. And uh, just a reminder, we have a few upcoming events, great events that you'd be interested in. Uh, on August 3rd is the Canadian Virtual Recruiters Conference. On September 22nd is the next Canadian Virtual HR Conference. And we have a number of uh, great uh, virtual hiring events. The Canadian Virtual Career Fair happens on July 28th. The TO Tech, so Tech Virtual Hiring Event happens on August 11th. The Bilingual Job Fair happens on August 18th. And the Canadian Student Conference and Career Fair happens on August 25th. Again, just visit eventlogic with a K.ca. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn if there's anything I can help you out with. Uh, check out the torontojobs.ca YouTube channel. And let us know how you like the event. We'll send out a survey in the next 24 hours for you to complete after the event. I really want to thank the speakers uh, today and the team. Uh, a lot of people behind the scenes. Uh, Alex, uh, great job. Rachel, amazing. Sandra, Sarah, Carla, and many more people involved in putting this on. So I want to thank them for doing this. And um, if you want to reach out to me, anything I can help you out with, don't hesitate. We do tack on another 10 minutes, so you can still head into the networking area. And into the set and into the uh, expo area if there's anything that might be of interest to you. So thanks very much again, Leanne, Medi. Thanks for being on here. Have a great day, and uh, everybody stay safe. Thank you.